Ladies and gentlemen, do yourself a favor, breathe in the moment because we are live here with Covenant Pro Wrestling Uproar, Bloody Valentine, episode 16. Of course, this is one of our pay-per-view episodes. Things are coming to a head, feuds are bubbling up to a boiling point, and in Perth, Australia, we're going to see quite a lot of violence. But right now, it starts off with a regular one-on-one -on -one matchup. Ebac, the Hyrulean High Flyer taking on the Bounty Hunter for Ray. Of course, over the last few weeks, for Ray has said he was, you know, commissioned to take out a hit on Ebac. Ebac wants answers. Ebac wants to know who who put out this hit, who's behind Ladies this. And, and right now, contest. we're gonna find out. Pool for one fall. Introducing first. Making their way to the ring from Norwich, England, weighing in at 240 pounds, he is the Hyrulean High Flyer, Ebag. The Hyrulean High Flyer, the conductor of the controller, Ebag, making his way to the ring. Ebag says there is no need for, you know, unsettling levels of violence. There is no need for weapons to be involved. There is no need for anything other than a straight one-on-one -on -one matchup to prove that he is better than Ferre in every way. Multi-time champion, a, uh, a stalwart of our brand here. Uh, you know, he's repping uproar to the fullest. And we, ha we have to admit that Evac is one of the ones that have, have been tried and true here on uproar, tried and true here in the CPW. I have a, a good feeling about Evac's odds here, taking on the Bounty Hunter, the outsider known as Foray. And now for his opponent, making his way to the ring from somewhere because he doesn't fill out his wiki, Foray. Well, we hear our announcer there not too pleased with Foray. He hasn't filled out his wiki. He's a bounty hunter and it's harder to even, it's even harder to hunt down information on this guy. We know next to nothing about Foray. We knew he was in the CWL for quite a long time or a short per period of time rather. He wasn't there for that long, but he had a history there. And even there he was an enigma. All we really know about this man is he likes violence. He likes to, you know, take on hits. He likes to essentially attack people in brutal fashion. So we'll have to see if tonight is going to be one of those nights. Can he succeed in a regular matchup? Can he succeed without blood and guts as he uh, is so alluded to that he loves? That remains to be seen, but Foray looking to be in great shape here tonight, looking to be focused. And now it is time to get it all started. We see Ebac in the corner there, and Foray as well. Referee Leonard Seymour dead in the middle of the ring. Well, well, not dead, but he's dead center in the middle of the ring. And starting off, the action for Ray has the upper hand right out of the gate. Ebac hit with a clubbing blow to the shoulders and the back. And now just working away on the arms. You know, that's going to take out quite a few maneuvers that Ebac has at his disposal. Uh, the side slam that he likes to do that game over. And also the NVIDIA driver. Snap suplex there by Foray. Just clubbing away on Ebac. And, you know, I have to wonder what caused all of this to happen. You know, I know this was sort of a Hitman thing. I know this was sort of Foray's uh, macho way to show off or, or whatever. <coughs> but really, what is the end game here? Is it just money? Is there more... Uh, more to it than that. And now we see Ebac being dropped on that top rope. Locking Foray in a submission here. Could he tap out very early in this match? Camel clutch not good enough. Ebac fighting back here, 
against a much larger man in Foray, but Foray has an answer for almost everything here with a huge neck breaker there. Picking his spot, dropping the knee to the face. You know, ladies and gentlemen, even though there's no um, weapons involved in this fight with a haymaker blow like that, that uppercut that only got a one count, you have to, you know, imagine that Ebak is not really feeling this situation right now. Regardless of whether Foray is armed, I think he's got some deadly weapons at his disposal. You saw that game over there. Could it be game over for Foray? But no, it is not. A nice little elbow drop just to add a little bit of punishment there. And now he's sort of picking his spots. Ebak working away on the arm, perhaps. And, and you know, uh, if my broadcast colleague were here tonight, he would call Ebak a little bitch, but he's not looking like a little bitch right now. He's looking like he's about to install. Oh, I thought he was going to go for the NVIDIA driver, and he did, but it was countered by Foray. And that hunting pile driver, that God style pile driver. Right, unable to get the job done. And now just working away again, looking to drop that foot, that knee on the face of Ebak. And now the big man is going up top. Absolutely me meteoric uh, elbow drop there. Referee Leonard Seymour, a two count. But Ebak still has more left in him, still has more left in the tank. And a dragon sleeper applied here. Referee Leonard Seymour in perfect position. But Ebak, the will is too strong with him. He will not give in. And we see him sweeping the legs, gaining the advantage. And just wrapping those legs around the neck and around the head of Foray. The bounty hunter is becoming the bounty hunted right now. Nice uh, backdrop suplex there. Perfectly executed. And now it may be game over. Pinfall, one, two, but Foray kicks out. Going for something big here, Ebak has plans. What's he gonna hit here? But unfortunately, unfortunately for Ebak, he's gonna get hit with another one of those hunting pile drivers. Two and a three count. By way of pinfall, the cosmically unknown and irrelevant man known as the bounty hunter, Foray. Well, Foray may be cosmically unknown and irrelevant to some. He may not have his info submitted to the Covenant Pro Wrestling staff, but right now that was enough to put the veteran E back away. Still more questions and answers, I imagine, for Ebak. Who? Who called the hit? Who made this all happen? I'm not sure, and I'm I'm pretty sure that none of you know either. But hopefully soon we'll find some answers. But for right now, that man is victorious. And speaking of bitter rivalries. Out of all the matchups here tonight, I think this one is one of the most anticipated. Aside from maybe the main event, Pinkish and Jacob Nitro have been feuding for the last several months and they've had very few occasions where they were even near each other. They've always had some excuse the for why the match didn't happen. Iron Man match. Introducing first. Making their way to the ring from Rahway, New Jersey, weighing in at 217 pounds, 
As the fire started, Jacob Nitro makes his way to the ring. As I was saying before, there was always some reason, some excuse as to why this match didn't happen. You know, Jacob Nitro had splinters in his fingers from a, ma a matchup that he had, uh, you know, at Hardcore Holiday. He, you know, was dealing with Pinker saying he was off with the Vanguard. Yeah! And, and neither one of these men seem like they even want to get into the ring. But right here, right now, tonight, we're going to see both of them go head to head in a 25 minute Iron Man match. I guess they're trying to make up for lost time, lost matches where the timing just wasn't right. And <laughs> luckily for all of us, I have a feeling it's going to be exceptionally brutal. You know, we've seen Jacob Nitro do Iron Man matches before the tables match that he had. Uh, that resulted in those splinters in his fingers was an Iron Man tables match against against Butch But now we're dealing with a whole different animal in the exo known as pinkish Making their way to the ring from somewhere in Nevada weighing in at 213 pounds He's the apathetic antipathic protagonist Pinkish! The apathetic, antipathic protagonist, the AAP. Pinkish making his way down to the ring in Perth, Australia. You now we've been told that Pinkish was going to show a different side of him tonight, a different level of, of carnage, a different angle, I, I, I guess you could say, with how he is willing to operate. And he said he's willing to face Jacob Nitro face to face, man to EXO, I guess. And I just can't wait to see it. What the? When he said face to face, I didn't think he meant face reveal. And that's something I don't think I'll ever unsee, but right out of the gate, a reverse DDT pinkish working away on Jacob Nitro already. Referee Leonard Seymour is going to have his work cut out for him with these two. A 25-minute time limit Iron Man match. Got to get his cardio as pinkish hammers away on Nitro here. Elbow drop. And a huge spine buster. Step up in Seguri there by Nitro. Getting back into the game. Went for a standing shooting star press. But Pinkish was able to get the knees up there. Heading up top. With the double foot stomps there. And a springboard moonsault misses the mark. I imagine that when he is in his fully cloaked form, when he has that coverage over his face, he has some sort of UI or some artificial enhancements that he's dealing with. But right now, this is raw pinkish, no scopes, no nothing. And he missed the mark. Going up one more time. A fist drop directly to the face of the fire starter. Those knees directly hitting the midsection of Jacob Nitro, but Jacob Nitro, Jakey boy getting back into it, or so I thought, but now a Hurricane Rana with some punches added into the mix, and Pinkish is just going off here. Nice thrust kick there, and maybe a gut wrench power bomb, and it is. Nitro kicking at the spine, or what I assume is a spine of Pinkish, 
And now working away on the legs. And as I call this match, I have to wonder what caused all these different diversions and, uh, and all these different delays that set this match, you know, way off. Spider suplex from the corner there, possibly setting up for a nitro boost, but no waving pinkish up. And a shotgun style drop kick from the top rope. A pinfall here. Referee Leonard Seymour says two. Not enough for the first fall here. And a nitro boost, but Pinkish got the knees up. Pinkish, a kick combination there, sweeping the leg. Jackhammer there. I think possibly going for that cerebral cobweb just a moment ago, but unable to do it. Just back and forth offense here. Pink is sending it to the outside perhaps, but Jacob Nitro deflects the attack and is able to hit a shotgun dropkick, rolling into the ring. Now going back up top, maybe looking for another Nitro boost. This one hit to perfection. The leg hooked. Two, but only a two count. Pinkish getting back in this one, working away on the extremities there on the hands, the carpals and the metacarpals there of Jacob Nitro. And now just hoisting him up with one single hand. A giant claw yet again, but Jacob Nitro, somehow the adrenaline is flowing and he is feeling quite explosive now. But Pinkish yet again. And a moment's notice. The drop of a dime. Pinkish possibly going for the thunder crash here. First there's thunder and then there's boom. Not good enough for the first fall in this match. A springboard of Phoenix Splash there. And now the action goes to the outside. I think Nitro was going for a knee there, a knee strike, but countered by the, the purple, pink, green man, exo, robot thing. I'm not quite sure. You know, he's got a lot going on, but right now what's going on is Pinkish is in full control on the barely padded concrete. As, as you can see there by the wonderful logo, this stream is brought to you by a trio helping connect content creators to sponsors that meet the needs of their community. Use the code JIMMY5 to get started today. Link is down in the description, and that's the, that's the plug for the night. Pinkish is really feeling himself, uh, really showing a different side of him, not just the mask being off, not just the suit being off, but he's getting a little fancy here. Spine Buster went for another springboard Phoenix Splash, but unable to hit it. Now a big thrust kick there, Jacob Nitro. Unable to get a fall here. Now we've seen finish after finish, signature after signature. 
You know, they've, they've hit all their renowned moves. And speaking of one now, a crossfire right in the middle of the ring. Two, three. The first fall goes to Jacob Nitro. And now Jacob working away on the legs of Pinkish. Possibly a power slam, but no. Reversing it into a re reverse DDT. Pinkage going back up top. Now Pinkage looking for a big maneuver here. Thunder crash. the second fall it's now 1-1 each man has a fall in this matchup springboard phoenix splash attempt yet again the energy that pinkish is expelling is insane but he's still able to battle back and a claymore there and yet again with that single-handed clawed chokeslam Going for a big submission there, but Jacob Nitro fall away slam. You know, this match has taken a long time to get going, a long time to happen. We've been trying to see these two go at it for the last several weeks, maybe even months potentially. And now that it has happened, we're seeing finisher after finisher, signature after signature, a huge elbow drop there in the middle of the ring, leg hooked, potentially the second fall for Jacob Nitro. And it is. Nitro is up 2-1 here. As he drops the EXO over the top rope. And another single leg drop kick there. Even though Pinkish is down, he's looking really good right now. Still has a ton of energy. And as the fight might spill to the barely padded concrete, referee Leonard Seymour doing his job, making the count. And Pinkish joins his adversary on the outside. Possibly in a bad mood. Or a bad move, I should say. I guess they're both in a bad mood. You look at that with that axe kick there. Three. Both of these men, they, they don't like each other. They're not even happy about facing each other. But it came to a point where, you know, our general manager, Will Sheridan, told them, if you don't face, if you don't face off, you're going to be on trash duty. Jawbreaker there. Jacob Nitro doing his best to stay in control of this matchup. Pink is still fighting back at every uh, step of the way. Of course, when they're on the outside, they do have to till a 20 count, but they're electing to bring it back into the ring. And I see why, because a Nitro boost is just what the doctor ordered here. And I believe that Jacob Nitro is up two falls here. But that could change at any moment. A jackhammer there. Pinfall. And nearly another. Nearly another fall for Pinkish. But he's not wasting any time as he hammers away on Jacob Nitro's face. Springboard splash, very effective, keeping the opponent down, 
keeping him gasping for breath. And now looking for something big here. And another thunder crash, thunderously hitting the middle of the canvas there. And another fall for the XO known as Pinkish. That apotheosis hit with brutal effectiveness right there in the middle of the ring going for the thunder crash again. What a thrust kick by Jacob Nitro. But Pinkish not ready to give up. Another fall. He miraculously kicks out. But a Nitro boost. I don't see how we can kick out of this one. Leg is hooked. Two. And a three count there. According to my count, it seems like Pinkish is up. Or, or not Pinkish is up. Jacob Nitro is up on Pinkish by two falls here. You know, guys, don't, don't trust my count here. I, I'm not, you know, a mathematician or anything. I was hired right off the street. I didn't go to college. Now Pink is working away on those uh, delicate fingers there. Yet again. And slamming Nitro. You know, when uh, even though Pinkish is down right now, when he said it was going to be a different side of him, when he said it was going to be a more brutal side of him, he said, you know, he said the right words. Ladies and gentlemen, could this be it? That Cerebral Cobweb locked in has another fall for Pinkish, and now he's going for the Thunder Crash. And it hits. And just like that, in a mere matter of seconds, the playing field has, you know, leveled out. As we approach the 10 minute mark of this matchup, that thrust kick yet again. And a fall there for Jacob Nitro. Up one, one fall yet again. And now, fighting back with a brutal lariat. Pink is going up top. With the double foot stomp. Pinfall here, the leg is hooked. And now we're all leveled out again, all evened up. The score is equal, 5-5, five, five, and the Thunder Crash is imminent. And Pinkish, over and over again, hitting that Thunder Crash. And now showcasing his strength. Springboard moonsault from the middle rope. Leg hooked. And I think, I think Pinkish might run away with this one. We're five to seven here. Pinkish is in the lead. And now Pinkish is just getting slammed into that top turnbuckle. You know, those turnbuckles, even though they're padded, they're not as padded as you would think. It's not a very pleasant experience, and neither is that. That rolling elbow strike. And now, closing the gap just a little, Jacob Nitro gains the fall there. It's now 6-7.
Neck breaker perhaps. No, a forearm strike to the back of the head. And busting, busting Jacob Nitro open. No frills there, nothing pretty. Pinkish is just trying to do his best. Apotheosis there. Two. Now we're looking at six, eight here. Maybe six, nine, but no. Jacob Nitro a crossfire. But elects not to go for the pin here. Trying to position Pinkish. And another fall here. Seven, eight. Pink is still in the lead, but the lead is closing very quickly. Jacob Nitro on a second wind here. That was a nasty knee strike. Uh, you know, precisely applied, precisely hit there. Pinfall, leg hooks. And Pinkish. Pinkish was going, going for the stomp and got hit with a cutter. Ladies and gentlemen, this match has been absolute insanity. Another fall for Pinkish. I know he's firmly in the lead now. And I began to lose my count at this point with how many falls there's been in this match, but I know that Pinkish is up by at least two possibly even three and that could add that could add one more and it does and just working away working away on his opponent you have to forgive me here, guys. I am feeling a little sick, so if you can hear it on commentary, if I'm not as enthusiastic as normal, it's not because I don't love you. I really, really do. Apotheosis there, and that could be another fall. Leg is hooked. Referee Leonard Seymour says one, two, and a three count. I won't lie to you guys. I have definitely, you know, lost count of how many you know, falls there has been in this match. But now there might be another one. Jacob Nitro's got the legs hooked. I don't know if Jacob is sitting here at eight or nine, but either way, Pinkish has at least 11. And at, at the very least, you know, we're talking at least 11. Uh, at the very least, Jacob Nitro is going to at least have a very sore and black eye in the morning. A double axe handle to add to the damage there. And Pink is trying to gauge what he's going to do. A springboard Phoenix Splash. What's he going for here? And he had an, another thunder crash. An unbelievable amount of thunder crashes here tonight. The thunder is repetitive. But a two count. This late in the game, Jacob Nitro has no other choice but to keep fighting. To keep, you know, 
giving it everything he has. And a leg is hooked there just after tripping him, tripping him up. And is, is Pinkish tired right now? Really, is, is he tired? Unbelievable to get a pinfall off of a maneuver like that. But, you know, I've seen everything in Covenant Pro Wrestling. And that's just another one of those things that I've seen. I don't know what he was going for there. Maybe that uh, consternation that he was going to employ. He said he had a few new maneuvers that were going to happen here tonight. And Nitro Boost may be about to happen, but no motioning up. Motioning Pinkish up to his feet yet again and returning the favor with a double axe handle. And a crossfire. Jacob Nitro up another fall here. But by my uh, very loose calculations, it's still not enough. We're approaching the one minute mark of this matchup and it's looking grim for uh, Jacob Nitro. It's looking grim uh, for his chances here in this match, especially after that. Possibly number 12 in this, in this matchup as Pinkish hits the Hurricane Rana and just continues to pummel this man. Apotheosis yet again. And just walking all over Jacob Nitro. Treating him like a doormat. And you know, the parallels of this matchup to what Jacob Nitro did to Butch at Hardcore Holiday. It's interesting because now he's on the reverse side. Now he is the one that's getting kind of beat up. Is this something that he expected? Is Pink is just on another level or is something else at play here? A pinfall here. I, I always see him trying to get him away from the ropes. And it's a good strategy because right now that's another fall. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm assuming we're sitting at like 10 and, and, and 12. He is the apathetic, antipathic, but that is going to do it because Pinkish Pinkin. was firm, firmly in the ring or in the lead. Jeez, it's going to be a long night, guys. It's going to be a real long night. This feud, I don't know if it's over. I don't know if it's just beginning. But I do know we got more wrestling here tonight than we got out of them in the last two months. And I hope, I hope that it stays that way. I hope every time these two individuals come out to the ring, we're going to see a match like that. Because that was bar none one of the best matches I have ever seen in CPW history. What is this? What the hell? It's Tony! Tony Samuels! He hasn't been seen in so damn long. What is he doing here? Tony Samuels is not a member of the CPW roster, at least not to my knowledge. I'll make this quick so as I don't drag on the show. But let me just say, I'm a big fan of what I've seen so far from Covenant Pro Wrestling. Naturally. As a fan, it's been a delightful watch, but let's be real. I'm not here to be a spectator. I came to play. Those of you who have followed my career thus far know that I'm the same Tony Samuels everywhere I go. Tony! The same Tony Samuels who wrestles the best matches of professional wrestling against the best wrestlers in professional wrestling. So to anyone from anywhere around the world who want to crack at me, you know where I am now. 
I implore all of you to come find me in Covenant Pro Wrestling. What the hell is going on tonight? None of this is scheduled. What the hell? I can't believe what I'm seeing. Ladies and gentlemen, that looks like... It's Troy Winters! 15-year veteran. Former champion in CWL. Troy Winters, 54 years old. Making a CPW debut. Who the hell gave the green light to this? I have no idea what's going on, ladies and gentlemen, but this does not look good for Tony right now. This, both men, I was gonna say, gonna square off. But Tony just got rocked, man. Troy Winters is here in CPW, and he just took out Tony with one move. But now, speaking of moves, we are moving on in the action. We're going into tag team action right now with Emma Barkley, Naval Leslie taking on Killer Instinct. Hisano and Belforent. We've seen the feud that's been developing. We've Ladies seen all of these women at each content. other's throats. It's an extreme rules match. And it all ends tonight. First. Making their way to the ring from Huntington Beach, California. This is California sweetheart, Emma Barkley. Emma Barkley, the hat still on, still confident, still ready to whoop ass in this matchup here tonight. We have been told that Emma Barkley has been more serious in the backstage area than she has ever been. She hasn't been her normal uh, chill and relaxed self. She's been very serious. She's been training very, very hard because she has a statement to make here. She has a statement to make with her best friend, Nava Leslie, that bullies can't win. And her partner, making her way to the ring from Glasgow, Scotland, this is Nava Leslie. Nava Leslie making her way to the ring, a graduate of the CPW Academy. You know, she has been one of the brightest stars so far in her brief history here in CPW. And with only a few, you know, I think one match under her belt, she was supposed to debut quite a while ago. She has impressed just about everyone in the backstage area. She's impressed me. I know she's impressed my uh, unfortunate broadcast colleague, Jacob Clark, who was not here tonight because he's a bad boy. Um, but that remains, you know, that fact remains that she has been continually impressive to everyone that's come across her. And I think her chances tonight are pretty damn good. But speaking of chances being pretty damn good, chances don't get and now for much opponents. better. Introducing first, making their way to the ring from Bordeaux, France. This is La Bet de Bordeaux, Belfort. Ladies and gentlemen, chances don't get much better than when you're a former CPW Women's Champion. There's only been two in history, potentially a third here tonight, but. <laughs> That is besides the point, but when you're a former champion, when you've been the top dog in all of you know the women's division, you have an air to you, you have a confidence to you that no one else can take away. And when you're teamed up, teamed up with a brute like the boss woman Hisano, the odds look pretty good on your favor as well.
and her partner, making her way to the ring, hailing from Kyoto, Japan, this is the Boss Woman, Hisano. Hisano, the Boss Woman, is not someone to, to mess with, not someone to take lightly because she is one of the most brutal the most extreme women that we have in the women's division. And when you're talking about extreme rules, you know it's something that she's familiar with. She grew up on the mean streets of Kyoto, Japan, and she grew up fighting in Yakuza fight clubs. She's been a champion several places across the globe, and, and she's been at the top spot in other places. So when we talk about Belle Florent being the top dog uh, at one point, we talk about Hisano being the top dog at another. That just gives them that slight edge to go into any matchup and be, be able to take advantage of the inexperience of who they're going up against. And we always see the focused look in Hisano's eyes. Ladies and gentlemen, that is a dangerous woman that you don't want to cross paths with. Referee Leonard Seymour in the background right now. You can see him shaking. Just thinking about getting in the ring with Hisano. And unfortunately for Seymour, unfortunately for everyone in this matchup, it is about to begin. And Dave Leslie, we warned him or we were talking about the history that he's had with Hisano and him being attacked by by Hisano in matchups but Neva said she has no time for a referee this is a fight who needs a ref but referee Leonard Seymour built like a tank Bell for rent working on the arm of Neva and Hisano working on the neck of her partner here, Emma Barkley, excuse me, I had to take a sip of water because I'm a human, unlike Pinkish. Now double underhook there. He's now going for something big, maybe a Uranagi, but Emma Barkley able to counter out. A delayed suplex here. You know, Emma doesn't look that strong. But she is, you know, looks can be very deceiving, especially when you're talking about the California sweetheart. Dragon screw in the middle of the ring and on the barely padded concrete, Neva Leslie is going a toe to toe with former women's champion. Right now, could we see some weapons come out? We see them on the outside of the ring. That's the quickest way to access those foreign objects, those international objects, if you will. And just gonging the head of Neva Leslie. You know, after all the injuries that Neva sustained several weeks ago, that is the last thing that she wants to be experiencing. And as Hisano uh, tries to work away on Emma Barkley, and Emma is resisting. Bell is in the middle of the ring. I thought she was going to go for a German there, but Neva able to keep her own, hold her own here. And now we have both members of Team Neva, Team Emma, on the outside, and Neva has a table, unsure what to do with it. She's trying to pick her spot here, doesn't know if she wants to put Hisano through or Bell through, but now she's decided to go after the Bell of the Ball, Labette de Bordeaux, Bell Florent. And it could be time, could be time for some acknowledgement, some achievement for an accolade. Got it locked in perfectly. Hasteno has no idea. Could this spell the end of the matchup here for that team? 
And honestly, folks, it looks like Hisano was just focused on Emma Barkley. Maybe they've got some sort of divide and conquer situation going on. Um, divvying up who's going to attack who. Both women on Team Neva had something big planned, but both were countered. And a two count there as he's the nose head ricochets off of that ring post. And a rolling cutter there as the snare trap, the, the butcher snare was locked in momentarily in the middle of the ring, but Nava Leslie able to keep fighting. Ladies and gentlemen, I apologize for the delay and me calling these moves, calling the action, telling this story for you all here tonight. But there's just so much going on as more weapons are being introduced. Belfort over, over on the top rope goes for a high cross body, but misses the mark. Nava Leslie sent to the outside again as Emma Barkley is sent inside. And Hisano decides to destroy the Turkish announce table. And Nava Leslie gets back at Belgium right with a kendo stick. It looks like somebody might be dreaming here in the middle of the ring. California dreaming could indeed spell victory here for Emma Barkley and Naval Leslie. The leg is hooked. Referee Leonard Seymour says one, two, but only two. Huge power bomb in the middle of the ring. match has been absolutely insane. It's got me a little tongue-tied. I've got to admit. Belle Florent knocking it out of the park there with, with Nava Leslie's head. But Nava hitting that shoulder block on the outside and, and grabbing the sledgehammer. Things did not look good for those medical bills. If you heard that on comms, I apologize. I'm not trying to be like Jacob Sterry. I'm just a little burpy. Or, or Jacob Clark. Yeah, yeah I, I forget there's timelines involved. Anyway, a Shihurai! Went for the pin. Immediately, immediately, you know, we're, we're able to get out of that situation. But it's going to be a bad situation where the chair is introduced. When the chair is introduced, it's a bad situation. Isano doesn't really know what she's gonna do with it yet, but Emma Barkley was, un, you know, luckily enough, she was fortunate enough to avoid that. I was going to say, unfortunately hit with that chair, but before I could say anything, she was able to fight it off. And now just passing around the chair. Bell Florent elects not to use it. Goes for a pinfall, the lateral press here. But a one count. It's not quite good enough. Punch to the gut there by Naval Leslie. A pump handle. Just throwing her. Just ejecting her nearly from the ring. And now Neva was going for something big there. But an, an enormous throw by Bell Ferrant, that suplex. And now that Butcher Snare is locked in. Could this be the end of this matchup as Emma Barkley just ricochets that chair off of the head of Hisano. Neva is in trouble here, but 
is able to withstand. You know, sometimes you would see um, competitors counter out of that maneuver with a uh, head scissors or some kind of other uh, counter, but that was just sheer will to hold on. And now, as Emma Barkley gets her knees, gets her thigh area, gets her abdomen area, just obliterated with that sledgehammer. Neva is also getting obliterated with that kendo stick before she stole it. And now, make sure that that is out of the matchup for good. It is destroyed, and it was destroyed on Belle Florent. Both Emma and Neva are out of this matchup now, and Belle and Hisano have the upper hand. They look proud, they look energetic, they look like they know what they're doing. Referee Leonard Seymour has his hands full, as do I here with my job, trying to call this action. Take down there. Bell from Rent stomping on the back of the head. Kicking the spine, going for a pinfall here, pushing that shoulder over, pushing that neck over, and nearly a three count, but Emma Barkley still has the wherewithal to kick out. I thought Hisano was going for something big there, but it seems like that sledgehammer strike from Bell Florent got in the way. Some miscommunications, perhaps. Killer Instinct is a very appropriate name for this duo. Bell Florent and Hisano, as they like to be called this new team, Killer Instinct, living up to the name. And now Neva once again grabbing hold of that table, setting it in the middle of the ring. Emma Barkley's in trouble. A vertical suplex position counters out a huge German. And Neva, sledgehammer in hand. Emma, table in hand. Taking both of her opponents out with the table and now setting it up. This is bad. Bad news. But if, if you're Emma and Neva, you've been dreaming of this. You've been dreaming of an opportunity to put them through th that wood. Put them through and, and have them get all those splinters and all those shards of wood embedded in their bodies. That is what Bloody Valentine is all about. Getting bloody, gr getting brutal, getting a little nasty. Playing the game by a different set of rules. Emma hits that maneuver on the top rope. Uh, slingshotting that neck on the top rope. Almost a stunner there. If I could remember my wrestling dictionary, I think they call that a hot shot or something. Either way, if I'm wrong, I'm wrong. All I know is it freaking hurt. Emma having a chop party on the outside before hitting Bell Flamant with an uppercut. And Hisano taking full advantage of the isolated Mabel Leslie. Going for a Shiharai. But Neva able to counter out the core strength there to get in the power bump position. Tried to go for the interceptor right to that table, but Hisano had it scouted, and a Shiharai could be all she wrote here. One, two, but only a two. Approaching the seven minute mark in this matchup, Emma, Emma Barkley's face approaching that steel chair and connecting flawlessly. <laughs> Somebody get her attention. Somebody get her a, a concussion checkup here. She needs an MRI or something. Neva somehow fighting back from Hisano, pump handle position, maybe going for that big throw again. 
And she is. Just a takedown and brutal strikes on Emma Barkley. And Neva, Neva Leslie doing the smart move, trying to divide this a little bit. You know, Emma is on the outside of the ring. She's got Hisano on the outside of the ring. And now, thanks to that quick thinking, Emma Barkley gets some breathing room here. Another kendo stick has been introduced into this matchup. But Hisano, the veteran, she knows all about kendo stick. She knows the pain. She knows how to counter those strikes with that kendo stick. And she is able to do so. And as this match approaches the six minute mark, it's only getting more brutal. And I, I would like to say that the, the pinfalls and the submissions don't count on the outside. But that was quick thinking, thinking by Emma Barkley to uh, break up that submission there. As once again, the foreign objects, the weapon, the bat is employed in this matchup. In California, Dreamin' right on the chair. Belle Florent hit the chair. Pinfall, Neva Leslie in the middle of the ring. Emma Barkley's got the pinfall. A two and a three. Emma Barkley and Naval Leslie getting the just desserts here. Finally, proving that they were better than the bullies known as Killer Instinct. You love to see it, you love to see the good guys come out on top, but I have a feeling that Killer Instinct, their instinct is going to be to crawl back harder, come back, you know, stronger. And that's not going to be the end of that story, maybe the end of this chapter. But Killer Instinct is now on the loose. And speaking of on the loose, the production people are going crazy tonight because now we have Loki taking on William Black in a Ragnarok match. We're told that Loki is going to use his mystical powers to manifest a cage that is created from the souls of everyone who is done wrong by the gods. Ladies and gentlemen, the following contest is a Ragnarok match. Introducing first. And making their way to the ring, I from Jotunheim, he is the trickster god known as Loki. The, the trickster god from Jotunheim just literally, in a matter of seconds, manifested a steel cage. A, a cell, if you will. That's the right term, a cell. Out of nowhere. Created from the souls of those who've done wrong by the gods? Well, whether or not that's true, whether or not, you know, the whole debate about this is, this isn't real. That's what William Black is saying. This is a fraud. But this doesn't seem very fraudulent to me. And now for his opponent, making his way to the ring from Biloxi, Mississippi, weighing in at 269 pounds, this is the Wolf of War, William Black. William Black making his way to the ring. William Black has always stood by the fact that he says he honors the gods every day. He honors them in his son's names. He honors them with his action. He honors them with sacrifices that he's made. He honors them with keeping the old ways alive and believing in the Norse gods. And although Loki says different, he William Black says that he's got this. That he's going to prove that Loki is a false god. That this isn't the true Loki. Because a god would never turn their back on the wolf of war. I don't know, William. This looks pretty damn real to me. Just moments away, and as we see that cage start to lower, 
I have to say that I think Loki may have an advantage here. William starting things off by tossing Loki over the top rope. A jawbreaker there on the Wolf of War. Went for a kick there, but Loki was countered. And now the action is heading back in the ring. But it wouldn't be a bloody Valentine without some blood. And a sledgehammer naturally from the Wolf of War tossed in the ring and ready uh, and waiting for him. I don't know what kind of mind game this is. Both men are in and out and dodging each other. Is this a uh, Pinkish versus Jacob Nitro match or is this uh, a Loki versus William Black, the Wolf of War? And again, this cat and mouse game continues. I guess Loki's not the only one with a trick up his sleeve. And finally, are these men gonna go head to head? Looks like they are as Loki is tossed in the corner, but an elbow strike gets him out of it. Went for the sledgehammer strike, but Loki able to phase away from it. Able to hit William Black with that forearm strike and lock him up in the corner. Now the sledgehammer was working for Loki, but only momentarily, only, only for a brief moment. Because now with that spine buster, that sledgehammer now being employed by the Wolf of War over and over and over again, it seems. Loki went for that Superman punch. Or I should say the uh, the demigod punch, if you will. I mean, I guess he's a full god. I'm not, I'm not sure of the logistics. I don't follow these guys. Don't at me on Twitter, all right? If there are... Norse gods among us. I really don't know what's going on. Respect, but at the same time, I got I got no time for it. And now, just as I got no time for the Norse gods, William Black's got no time for Loki as he hammers away with a sledgehammer multiple times on Loki. And now, just locking in that submission thinking that the, the false god, so he says, will tap out. But it doesn't happen, and Loki is still in this one. A huge DDT there. I don't know who taught Loki how to do a DDT, but it was pretty damn good from where I'm sitting. And a sledgehammer strike, and William Black Trying to mount some offense against the uh, the Norse god here, Loki, the trickster god, hitting him with those knees, and I think I see god blood. The gods bleed. A reverse DDT by Loki, and now returning the favor. The Wolf of War is now seeing red as well, and that's because blood is dripping out of his eyeball. Under his eyeball, over his eyeball, who freaking knows? All I know is it's there, and it's flowing. Nice neck breaker maneuver onto the knee. That must be one of those uh, Jotunheim specials. And speaking of specials, we've got a King Killer right on the sledgehammer. Two count, but only a two. A black fang attempt there, but a knee, a knee by Loki, and he once again grabs the sledgehammer. A two count. Iris whip into the corner, potentially looking for that um, super king killer, if you will. Yeah. 
but a DDT, further exacerbating that cut over the eye. It would have been quite appropriate. Wait a minute. Going for a king killer of his own. But unable to get it done. A lariat there by William Black and a springboard splash. I was going to say that it would have been very appropriate for that super king killer to get hit. That God's among us. Because, you know, there's God's among us. Or so they say. Anyway, a drop till hold there. Countering out of that sledgehammer strike. And Loki. Loki hitting him with that big uh, switcheroo there. And a king killer. But only a two count. Referee Leonard Seymour can't even believe it. And neither can I as William Black is getting hammered away with that sledgehammer, quite literally. But we could see yet another King Killer. William Black hits it with perfection. The leg is hooked, and this could be it. But only a two. The Black Fang, that could be it. William Black elects not to go for the pinfall, wants to work away on Loki, employing that sledgehammer yet again. Four strikes, five strikes, six strikes. I lost count of how many it feels like that pinkish match we just saw. This is just absolutely endless and William Black continuing to hammer away. And now this could be this could be the end. Yet another King Killer. The leg is hooked. And that is it. The Battle of Pinfall. The Wolf of War. William Black. Ladies and gentlemen, William Black has proven that he is indeed a God Killer. He has proven that he could defeat the God of Mischief. Loki. And now it looks like he's not done. Looks like he's going to continue inflicting damage with a spine buster in the middle of the ring and now celebrating as green smoke emanates from everywhere in the arena. Wait a minute. What the? It's the inner painter. It's been the inner painter the whole time. What the hell? I thought gods were among us, but it turns out that the trickster was just a trick by the entertainer, William Black, defeating his nemesis yet again, victorious in this matchup. And speaking of matchups, we're moving on in the action. The Blazing Renegades taking on Magnifico. You've heard me right. Magnifico. A play on Mac Daddy Furnace and Magnifico Bruno Natoli for the Tag Team Championships. These two, two teams have been Ladies absolutely incredible as of late. Is a Tag Team Championship match. Introducing first. Representing Magnifico from Bradford, England, weighing in at 245 euros, this is the White Rose, Mac Daddy Furnace. Mac Daddy Furnace, the big daddy from Bradford, England, making his way to the ring, looking to attain the World Tag Team Champions, uh, World Tag Team Championships from the champions Dragon Kid and Morgan Sharp with an unlikely uh, a partner here in Bruno Natoli. You know, Mac has been working with Bruno. Uh, Bruno's been kind of working with Mac, but neither of them, neither of them really like each other. So it's an odd pairing. But if they can 
you know, gain these championships, if they can make this happen, well, where does it go from here? from Palermo, Sicily, weighing in at 235 pounds, he is Magnifico, Bruno Natoli. Bruno Natoli, the second generation wrestler, making his way out to the ring to join his unlikely partner in Mac Daddy Furnace to try to gain these tag team titles. Now, I'm not very fond of Mac Daddy Furnace gaining some gold because it's all he'll talk about. All he talks about is money and currency and cryptocurrency. You put some gold around his waist and you're just never going to hear the end of it. But this is the man, Bruno Natoli, that I could see being a champion for a long time to come. And I have to admit, as much as I like Dragon Kid, as much as I like Morgan Sharp, as much as they're the toughest sons of bitches in the tag team division so far, they have, you know, a really tough shot here at defeating these two up and coming tag team wrestlers. Two single stars that have combined their forces to become unstoppable here in the tag team division. And it does not look good for the tag champs but as I say that, I have to, you know, really stress that these two, Dragon Kid and Mac Daddy, uh, Dragon Kid and Morgan Sharp, rather, now for their are the best we have. Introducing first, he is one half of our world tag team champions, weighing in at 160 pounds from Guadalajara, Jalisco, Mexico. He is the dragon of the fire spirit, Dragon Man. Dragon Man making his way to the ring. Dragon Kid got a beard and some sort of mask. Get up. Look like Nightwing out here. I, I guess the Dragon Kid is a fan of DC Comics. But I'm just dumbfounded at how adult he looks in a Halloween costume. Very strange. All jokes aside, we have seen... You know, Dragon Kid has matured. He's become one of the most fierce competitors that we have in the tag team division. He's been a fighting champion the entire time. He's never shied away from a challenge. He's always looked forward to the next hurdle, to the, to, to the next challenge. Um, all the hurdles that you can put in front of him, he's going to try to jump over. And that is no different here tonight. Except for maybe uh, the Comic-Con attire. I don't know what's up with that, but it looks pretty cool. Just moments away from getting this started. And I, I just, I have to wonder. I have to wonder, is this going to be some sort of themed matchup or something? Well, Dragon Man looking very confident right now in the middle of the ring as he awaits his tag team partner, Morgan Sharp. And now for his partner. He is the second half of our world tag team champions, weighing in at 207 pounds from San Antonio, Texas. He is the last gunslinger. Oh. God. Morgan Sharp. Morgan Sharp feeling uh, very hood right now. Uh, red hood. Coincidentally having a brown hood, but I, I guess I was correct in my, my first assessment. This is going to be a costumed matchup for the tag team champions as... Uh, Morgan Sharp comes out here just tearing the title to shreds there, just shredding on that title belt. Feeling pretty good about his odds here. Yeah. 
Those beautiful title belts made possible by Matty of the Multiverse. Uh, go check out the MV when you get a chance. Uh, join our Discord, and I'll drop a link whenever you ask me to. Now, this is just silly. Honestly, this is just... I have no idea what's going on, but... I'm fine with this. This is, this is fine. And ladies and gentlemen, that's what it's all about. Those World Tag Team Championships. Those right there. Dragon Kid and Morgan Sharp fighting champions. Ready to give it their all, but not ready to give up those titles. Referee Leonard Seymour living the boyhood dream, ho hoisting uh, both of those titles up. He dreamed about that his whole life, and now it is a reality. Back to Eddie Furnace, right out of the gate. Throwing Dragon Kid over that top, top rope there. Cutting off the airway, but it doesn't last long because Dragon Kid is fighting back. Both of these men going toe to toe. That rolling slam there, a pinfall. Morgan un, you know, bothered, unworried about that. He knew that Dragon Kid was going to kick out, but now Mac Daddy Furnace showing some good tag team wrestling, perhaps. Heading into the corner. But no, just hanging. Dragon Kid out to dry. I assumed that he was going for a tag there. But no, he was in it for his own self-interest. Uh, and trying to pull a dirty trick there and make sure that he's able uh, to get that belt and get those championship titles. Around the waist of Bruno Natoli and himself. Went for a shotgun drop kick there. I imagine that Dragon Kid was going for that patented Spanish fly. But unable to do it. And just slamming Dragon Kid down face first. Mac Daddy Furnace is in full control. A nice Snapdragon suplex, but a tag to Morgan Sharp. Morgan Sharp, the big boy with the kicks. Coming in with a German suplex. And now the second generation. Bruno Natoli making his way into the ring. And a cutter out of nowhere. Hitting Red Hood. I mean Morgan Sharp. Where it hurts. And Bruno Natoli is notorious for those cutter maneuvers. Um, he hits them out of absolutely nowhere. You know, he's got his Magnificutter, cutter, of course. He's got that springboard cutter as well. And going for a tag here. Smart tag team wrestling. A very old school mentality being displayed here by Bruno Natoli. Springboard moonsault there on Morgan Sharp. Morgan Sharp definitely feeling the pain. A leg is hooked there. Dragon Kid able to break up the pin. And a drop kick there. Morgan's getting back into this one. Mac now up to his feet. What's he gonna do here? A German suplex elects not to go for the pin there. In that momentary hesitation as Bruno Natoli was trying to swat him away. Caused Morgan Sharp to not hit that maneuver but a reverse DDT here perhaps. And a huge spinning punch showing the athleticism. And speaking of athleticism, one of the most athletic people that we have on the roster at Phoenix Flash. Leg is hooked, but only a one count.
Morgan Sharp, the bullseye. Right on the money, literally. And the, the double foot to the face, giving enough breathing room for Mac Daddy Furnace to go get a tag. And now the fresher Bruno Natoli back in this one. Powerbomb position. Sending the red hood, I mean Morgan Sharp, outside of the ring on the barely padded concrete as his uh, partner there, Nightwing, I mean Dragon Kid, watches on. Bulldog to the outside. Face ricocheting on the barely padded concrete. Tries to get a kick in. Bruno able to revert it, but these two being um, very unpredictable here, going back and forth. And just like that, spinning him around. Bruno now sending him against the turnbuckle post, that ring post there. Up to a count of six. Of course, we do have up to a count of 20 in CPW rules. And somehow I think, somehow I think Morgan has been outside for far too long because, oh my God, he was feeling himself a little bit too much. But speaking of feeling themselves a little bit too much, Bruno Natoli may have been in his own head. Went for a tope, went for a, a suicide dive rather. And unable to hit the mark. And Dragon Kid countering a suplex, going into a German. Going for a pin fall here perhaps. Yes, he is. The leg is hooked. But Mac Daddy Furnace. They don't call him Magnifico for nothing. Dragon screw, highly appropriate for this individual that's, you know, laying on the punishment. Dragon Kid going up top. An elbow drop. Going back up again. Mac Daddy Furnace is very close to Dragon Kid there. The Kid Saw. Elects not to go for the pin. Goes for a, a, a senton there. But Bruno counters the Insigiri. And, and is now in control again in a split second. In just a moment, the momentum can shift. And now able to get a tag to the White Rose. Mac Daddy Furnace. Clubbing blows to the face and the head of Dragon Kid. And now dragging DK over. Unable to get him to the corner where I think they were going with it. It's back and forth action. The box office breaker, a pinfall. Morgan Sharp hasn't budged. He didn't move a muscle. The Bahamut Espiritu hit with perfection. The espresso shot or whatever Jacob Clark would say. The Bahamut espresso shot, unable to get the victory here. A weird twisting splash there. I've seen that maneuver pulled off a few times here tonight. I don't quite understand it. Doesn't seem like there's enough, you know, um, space to flip and turn. Seems very dangerous to me, but a frog splash will do the job right. A code red on the outside. That sunset flip bomb. And now the submission is locked in. Mac Daddy Furnace. Mac Daddy Furnace got the pump and dump scheme. Is Dragon Kid ready to pump and dump them titles? Forget I said that. But you know what I meant. And now my knee to the face. Dragon Kid trying to, to gain some of the momentum back. A DDT to the leg there. Going up top. DK with the kid salt. Two. 
Sending Bruno to the outside. DK getting his cardio in for just a moment. The energy is flowing through him. He doesn't quite know what to do or what spot to pick. And now a tag. Gets Morgan Sharp into the matchup. Now the legal man heading directly after Mac Daddy Furnace. But Mac, the slippery, the slimy. Hits the box office breaker. That could be it. The leg is hooked. Seymour says one, two. But no, it is broken up by Dragon Kid. And I've got to tell you, I thought that was it. Well, we could be seeing the stock market crash. No. The elbow drop off the, uh, off the target. Well, considering that, uh, you know, Morgan Sharp is all into real estate. I could say off the market. Stocks and real estate. That's the language he speaks. But right now, the language that Morgan Sharp and Dragon Kid are speaking are tag team wrestling. Rope break caught by referee Leonard Seymour. Always has his eyes open. Always looking for those little little things that make the difference in a match. Bruno Natoli coming back in. Snapmare and a huge kick there. Dragon Kid gaining some momentum on the second generation wrestler here. Just tossing the much smaller DK over his shoulder. DK's grabbed the ropes. But Seymour, Seymour didn't see it. Magnifico has stolen one. We have new tag team champions. Seymour didn't see it. I cannot believe what just happened. We have brand new tag team champions, but what the hell? Bruno Natoli taking out his own tag team partner, busting open Mac Daddy Furnace, and now working away on him with some punches over and over and over again. You just won the tag team titles. This should be something you're celebrating together. What the hell are you doing, Bruno? And as he stomps away, you see the face of Mac Daddy Furnace. Busted open. And now being tossed aside like he's trash, essentially. Like he's expendable. And Bruno Natoli has something planned here. What's he gonna do? Magnificutter. On the outside. Unbelievable. And the Sicilian scoop slam. This is this is too much. No, Bruno, this is too much. That's that's too much. And a chair shot directly to his partner, directly to Mac Daddy Furnace. A third chair shot. And no. Onto the chair. The Sicilian scoop slam onto the chair. Mac Daddy Furnace never saw it coming. We never saw it coming. Bruno Natoli. Bruno Natoli has pulled a fast one on the entire world. This is the biggest screw job in CPW history here in Perth, Australia. Undisputed World Tag Team Champions. How the, what the hell does that mean? But ladies and gentlemen, one championship to another. We're going right into the action with the CPW Television Championship. Jamie Clark taking on the big match button, Lucas Button, in a regular match. Unfortunately, this is not going to be your blood and guts matchup. 
uh, or at least I'm assuming no weapons are involved here. But it is going to be quite the brutal match. Ladies and gentlemen, the following contest is scheduled for one fall with a 20 minute time limit. And it is for your world television championship. Introducing first, making their way to the ring from Hawaii, weighing in at 251 pounds. He's the loudmouth man with the commentary band. And he's that is the true. of Alex and Cassidy Clark. This is Jacob Clark. Yes, yeah, several weeks ago, uh, a couple weeks ago, uh, Jacob Clark was banned from commentary with me, so that's why I'm doing the commentary alone tonight. And now, he's able to still compete as a wrestler, and he's going for the television title. You have to think that Will Sheridan, our chairman, gave Lucas Button a very good talking to, a very thorough talking to, to make that not happen. But I've got to be honest, as much as I don't like Jacob Clark burp burping in my ear, on commentary, eating his Chinese food, eating his chicken balls, or wh whatever he eats. And that's his words, not mine. As much as I dislike all of that, I want this man to win. I want a fighting now champion. Opponent, making their way to the ring from Nottingham, England. Weighing in at approximately 240 pounds. He is the reigning and defending CPW World Television Champion. This is Big Matt. Lucas Button. Big match button staying true to his name. He hasn't wanted to defend that CPW television championship unless it was on a big stage. Fortunately for everyone watching here tonight, we are on a big stage here in Perth, Australia for Bloody Valentine. And we are finally seeing him defend this television title that's intended to be defended, maybe not each week, but pretty often on regular uproar television but Lucas has refused to abide by the rules there. So if you're anybody in the locker room, if you're anybody watching at home that enjoys entertainment, that wants to see a, see a title contested on a regular basis, you want this man to lose. You want this man to, to come out as the, as the lesser of the two. But unfortunately, Lucas Button is so damn good, I don't know if it's going to happen. Ladies and gentlemen, just moments away from finally seeing a television title defense. And I don't think I've ever seen Jacob Clark look this serious. You know, he called me earlier tonight. He sent me a text message. He tried to communicate with me in several ways because he is obviously banned from the commentary desk. He told me, this is the night of the Clarks. This is the moment that we finally ascend to the kings that we deserve to be. They say there's no gods, no kings, but if you're a king's man, you're always a king. You're always royalty in the Clark dynasty. And that is what it's all about, the television title. Getting the match underway. Lucas Button locking up with my broadcast colleague there. And immediately busting him open on the top turnbuckle. Not the start to this matchup that I expected. Not the start, I think, that Jamie expected. Might want to check out uh, with a dermatologist what's up with all that loose skin or that thin skin, I should say. Because I don't think that's normal unless he got hit real hard. Fisherman suplex there. Very snappy release. And now big match button going up top here. And a frog splash right on the money. And nothing pretty about that. No technical skill involved. 
That's just brutality. And I said a moment ago that I didn't think this match was going to be a bloodbath, but I guess I was wrong. Because just, you know, seconds into it, my broadcast colleague Jacob Clark has been busted open. And if I know him like I think I know him, he's gonna want revenge. Ladies and gentlemen, those here in attendance in Perth, Australia, those watching at home, those surfing CovenantProWrestling.com, trying to find the very best deals on t-shirts. Uh, thank you for joining us here tonight. And I am sorry for what we're about to see, because I have a feeling it's going to be way more than we bargained for. As Jacob Clark goes up top, perhaps a superplex. But no, Lucas Button able to counter out and just sending Jacob to the canvas, motioning for him to get up now. And a shotgun drop kick, pressing all the right buttons there. The Button Destroyer. And he hits it. Pinfall, not quite enough, not quite enough to take Jacob Clark out of this matchup. But the end of days, no counter. A very unique counter there into a lariat and now a midnight, busting him open. Returning the favor and a dragon suplex holding the pin there. Referee Leonard Seymour says that was just a one count. You gotta try just a little bit harder. Lucas sending Jacob into the corner and just pounding away on the opposite side of the face and now electing to hit him with some Pretty brutal kicks there, but Jacob, the veteran, he's, he's young, but he's seen so much in his years. Tickets to your clown fall. And I'm damn sure I wasn't invited. You can keep them tickets to yourself because that is not something you want to feel. And Jacob going up top. We don't see this often. He's a big boy trying to repay that drop kick and he hits it and a springboard Phoenix Flash. Very uncharacteristic. And now the Hell's Gate locked in. The legs are clasped over that, that body, the torso. But will it be enough? No big match button seems to be powering out. Working away on the midsection here, continues to do so. Exposing that rib cage and just hammering away. And now we could be looking for, he could be looking for the button destroyer yet again. And he hits it. The leg is hooked, a two count. Lucas looking for a big maneuver here, looking to end it all with the end of days, but no, the end of days countered again with another lariat, another counter. I cannot believe what I'm seeing. Jacob Clark going for something big there, but Lucas had it scouted, and now just continuing to hammer away on that face. The knee strikes perfectly placed. And a shining wizard. Crucifix power bomb. Doesn't elect to go for the pin there. Usually he does. Guess he's in the mood to cause more punishment with a midnight. Good night, Lucas Button. That has got to be it. And it isn't. You see the crimson mask. 
you see the blood trickling down the face of my broadcast colleague Jacob Clark it is incredible and going there for another ticket to your clown fall perhaps but Lucas Button having it scouted and a huge power slam and the button mash One, two, three, and he kicks out. I cannot believe the sheer brutality that we're seeing here. We said it was gonna be a bloody Valentine, but I think this is the most blood we have seen all damn night. And it's in a match that wasn't intended to be bloody. A drop kick. To the back of the head there, the back of the shoulders. And now Lucas Button just stomping away, picking his spots, doing the smart moves, possibly going for an end of days here. And that could be, no! Yet another counter. Another springboard Phoenix flash there. Jacob Clark, he's got two tickets. He's got two tickets. Going for the pinfall. Ticket to your clown fall hit with perfection. A two. And Jacob Clark. Jacob Clark is our new television champion. He said it was going to be the night of the Clarks. I cannot believe it, but he may be right. You see him hitting that midnight to perfection. You see him hitting another one. The course of this matchup was a winding road and that road led to victory for Jacob Clark. In sheer disbelief, in sheer agony, I, I imagine. Jacob Clark, with that belt draped over his body. And I've got to admit, Damn it, man. He freaking earned it. He may be uh, hard to absorb, hard to deal with sometimes, but he earned that belt. We have a new television champion. And continuing the trend, continuing the trend of, of seeing who is going to be our champions here tonight. We are going right back into the action with championship contest. For the women's championship now, Lauren Osborne taking on Marilyn Myers, who has kind of shown us her true colors lately. Marilyn has been, you know, interfering in matches, trying to get under her skin, and it has worked. But Lauren Osborne is not one to take lightly, and we all will the see is right now. Cage match, and it is for the CPW World Women's Championship. Introducing first, making her way to the ring from the Welsh Valleys of Wales. This is the Welsh Firecracker, Lauren Osborne. Lauren Osborne coming out to the ring with a slightly different look uh, as her usual look. She is covered in gold right now and we've seen a trend in Covenant Pro Wrestling. Um, the women's wrestlers, the men's wrestlers, they come out dressed in gold and that seems to manifest a win in championship contest lauren knows this she knows the tradition she knows the superstition but she also knows that she's one of the toughest competitors that we have she is quite literally our captain here tonight at least at the women's division and i kind of like her odds and now her opponent Making her way to the ring from Los Angeles, California. She is the queen of screams. Your world women's champion, Marilyn Myers. But with all these, you know, championship contests here tonight, we've been speaking of odds all night. I've been speaking of odds all night, but odds don't matter as much when you have someone that's willing to bend the rules, someone that's willing to get dirty, someone that's willing to do anything to win, those odds become quite insufficient to predict who is going to go home victorious tonight. Because 
Marilyn Myers showing her true colors, showing that she is quite the heel, so to speak. Quite the heel and unprepared to give that title up. She's not ready to do it. She's not going to do it. And Lauren Osborne's going to have an uphill battle for herself here tonight. But celebrating with the fans. Smile on her face as always. But the intense Marilyn Myers looks on. Ripping onto that belt. Holding onto it as tight as she can. Before she hands it over to referee Leonard Seymour. As is the tradition here. Quite reluctant to do so, but at least for Seymour's case, she's being a good sport. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, this is a cage match. There are no escapes. There are no escapes. There are no run-ins. We've seen um, in the last few weeks, there have been several run-ins um, that have you know, taken place. Marilyn Myers running in on uh, Lauren Osborne's matches, trying to distract her, trying to make her lose. And now none of that is possible here tonight. And this back and forth action as, as we get underway in this matchup, moving so quickly. A nice kick there by Lauren. Marilyn Myers, the champion, finds herself backed into a corner, but you never put a wild dog, a rabid dog in a corner. And, that, and that's exactly what the Queen of Screams is. The Queen of Screams is one mean bitch, and I say that in the best possible way. But now as Lauren Osborne works over that shoulder, works over that clavicle region. Follows it up with a neck breaker. And Lauren, from the very beginning, from her, her very start here, she's always been one of those who won't say die. One of those that always pushes the envelope and not even a one count. It didn't seem, seem like I didn't hear a count from Seymour. And a reverse DDT there by Marilyn Myers. And a neck breaker of her own. One count there. I, I believe it was a slow count. I, I think that was more of a two, but Seymour, uh, you know, he's the official. He makes the rules. And now, Lauren hitting the Valley Driver. Could that be it? Could that be enough? But Marilyn powering out at the last second, literally the last second. She's going up top here. Hits the Airborne Osborne. But only a two, just milliseconds away from a three count. Marilyn Meyer is able to get the shoulder up. Jacking the jaw there of Lauren Osborne. Lauren Osborne doing the same thing. Springboard here goes for a big thrust kick from a springboard, but doesn't hit it. She's unable to hit it. And a neck breaker there by Marilyn Myers. And we've seen this before. And the Dragon Slayer, the Grave Digger, is locked in. That could spell disaster for Lauren Osborne. She may very well tap here. Not many have been able to withstand that, but she lets it go. And now Marilyn Myers going for a pin and only a two.
The lumbar region being obliterated here by Marilyn Myers. Going up top, perhaps. No, she's practicing her cardio or doing some form of exercise, it seems. Not a good idea in a match of this caliber. Lauren Osborne is, is nobody to take lightly, nobody to joke at. I say it so often. Everybody in this company is somebody that you should take very, very seriously. They're here for a reason. And especially someone like Lauren Osborne that has the will, that has the skill to walk out of, you know, Perth, Australia as a champion. I don't understand why she would take that so lightly. Thought she was going for an airborne Osborne, but still, she's quite literally an airborne Osborne on that maneuver. <laughs> Slamming the face in the corner. European uppercut barrage. Irish whip into the other corner. Another European uppercut. And yet another. And a drop kick to top it all off. One, two, three, two count, but only a two. Lauren tossing her into the corner again. Marilyn Myers knew she was in a bad way, doing whatever it takes. The Skull Crusher. Skull Crusher hit. Marilyn Myers going for the pin. Lauren Osborne just there at the rope. Reach out and grab it, but she's able, able to kick out. I cannot believe, I cannot believe what I'm seeing here. And now we could be seeing the Twisted Fantasy. And she hits it. Lauren Osborne is in a bad way here. The leg is hooked. Marilyn Myers could be walking out, still champion. But Lauren Osborne, the Welsh firecracker, still has some more explosivity to show off here tonight. Lauren countering, grabbing that leg, able to hit an elbow. And a German suplex. Lauren, can she seize her moment? Went for the Airborne Osborne that Marilyn, Marilyn counters, she's got the knees up. And a TDT sending Osborne down to the canvas. Match is back and forth. Lauren is up. Marilyn is down. Just hammering away. Hammering away. Bludgeoning away on Marilyn Myers with those knees. Snapmare. A knee strike. A pinfall here. And your winner this time is the pinfall. Warren Osborne. Lauren freaking Osborne is our CPW women's champion on a knee strike. Lauren Osborne just won the CPW women's championship on a maneuver that is not her finishing maneuver. It's not one of her most well-known maneuvers. She was just able to wear down Marilyn Myers, the queen of, queen of screams, so much that all she had to do was persevere. And we have a new champion. She came dressed in gold and now she will be draped in gold being presented by Leonard Seymour with that CPW Women's Championship. History has been made here tonight. Lauren Osborne put a W in the column, put a title reign on the chart because this one was off the charts. Congratulations, Lauren. And now going from championship matches to championship chases.
the championship aspirations. Johnny D and J. Scott once again going head to head. This time trying to figure out who was going to be the number one contender for the CPW World's Heavyweight Championship. The following contest is scheduled for one fall with a 20 minute time limit. Introducing first, making their way to the ring from Rockville, Maryland, weighing in. 233 pounds. He is the greatest of all time. Jay Scott. Jay Scott, the greatest of all time. One of the most technically gifted professional wrestlers on the face of this earth. One of the most famous television actors on the face of this earth. Uh, has been making waves in Covenant Pro Wrestling since his signing. He's the highest paid athlete in all of sports. And now and he is fighting. Failing. From Youngstown, Ohio, weighing in at 200. He's fighting a man that doesn't care about any of that. Demon of Youngstown, Johnny D. Johnny D, the raging demon of Youngstown, wants one thing and one thing only. He wants that CPW World's Heavyweight Championship. And whoever wins this matchup here tonight, whether it be Jay Scott or Johnny D, they're going to be either facing Will Sheridan if he retains, or perhaps Jamie Clark if he's able to dethrone the king. Either way, we will already know what the next big matchup is going to be in Covenant Pro Wrestling. And judging by the look on that man's face, you think, you would think that he's very confident it's going to be him. Johnny D coming out of the gate with a uh, overhand strike there. But Jay Scott, very quick, very athletic, very agile. Not allowing Johnny to hit him with anything uh, too brutal in the outset of this match. And just as I say that, we see a power slam just effortlessly list lifting, uh, excuse me, Jay Scott up. Johnny D, an absolute madman, an absolute monster, absolute powerhouse. But Jay, a powerhouse in his own right, only a light heavyweight, but he's able to lift so much more than his body weight. Johnny countering out of that back body drop. Jay finds himself in a bad position here again. A power slam. And you know, neither of these men like each other. Both of these men want nothing more than to be the star of CPW. Both of these men have had their troubles with our world heavyweight champion, Will Sheridan. Both of them, you know, have wanted to be that top spot to dethrone Will Sheridan. And it makes them both very angry that right now here tonight in Perth, Australia, they are not the ones that are fighting Will Sheridan, but rather fighting an opportunity, fighting for an opportunity, a chance to fight Will Sheridan. Both men feel as though they have proven that they have what it takes. And as Jay Scott works over that midsection and those extremities, locking in that submission, you have to think that he has earned it. But Johnny D has been impressive in his own right. And he is a scary SOB. Jay gaining a moment, a momentary advantage here, but Johnny D going up top with an elbow drop here. And maybe thinking military press slam. Show of strength here is absolutely insane. And another elbow drop for good measure. Johnny Davenport from Youngstown, Ohio is going to be a name in the record books for sure. He's a future champion, may in fact be the next champion. Just tossing 
Jay Scott, the greatest of all time. The star of Behind Frenemy Lines. And Jay counters out. Jay is still in this one in a spine buster on the barely padded concrete. Jay, I think it was going for that victory road. Found himself briefly in a bad situation, but was able to counter out and just slamming Mr. Davenport onto the canvas. Ragdolling Johnny D around, or ragdolling Jay Scott around is Johnny D, I should say. And another power slam. This man can hit a power slam out of nowhere. From any part of the ring, any part outside of the ring, from any counter you can imagine. He's got a way to pull it off. Nice wrestling takedown, the amateur style. Continuing to be very technical, be, be very selective with what he's doing. Jay Scott, he's got the big man up, but the big man too damn heavy. And yet another power slam. Johnny D, he's got him up. Alabama slam. Johnny D up top. The leap from Oak Hill. Hit with perfection. Johnny D's got the legs hooked. Referee Leonard Seymour says that is not good enough. And now Johnny potentially looking for that demon's wrath, but Jay Scott saw it coming. Hit him with a Larry and hit him with a clothesline. And now it's time to smash some Adams. The Adam Smasher, the leg hooked. And only a two. Both men think, thinking the same thing there. Neither one hitting it. Jay Scott throwing Johnny into the corner. Could we be looking at Victory Road here? And it looks like we are. Johnny D is in a bad way. Victory Road. One, two, but only a two. Johnny D knows that when the Victory Road is not successful, the next thing to come is the Adam Smasher and he's fighting his way, trying to make that not happen. Elbow strikes in the corner, and now Johnny standing over Jay Scott and just pummeling him. Dragon Screw takes the big man down. Jay Scott revving the engines up, engines up. And it may be time to smash some Adams yet again, and it is one. Two, three. what the, what the absolute hell. And a power slam of his own. Jay Scott hooks the leg, but only a one. Wrenching on that neck. I don't know how he was able to find it. Johnny D, the big burly boy, somehow has a neck. And Jay Scott goes for an elbow drop, misjudges the distance, lands right on the canvas, no contact. Johnny 
Tossing, <laughs> tossing Jay like a child. Got to get some water in my body. Joe's getting sore. Just like both of these men in the ring. A one count. Ah, refreshing. And a spinning fist there. A discus punch. Thought it was going to lead to more than that, but Jay Scott. Now in a bad way. The Demon's Wrath kicked out. Jay Scott and another discus punch there. Now a series of just regular punches, ground and pound there. Johnny D going back up. Could this be the leap from Oak Hill yet again? He went for it. Jay had it scouted. And just dumped. Dumped outside on the barely padded concrete. Another wrestling takedown. Not quite a spear there, but quite effective nonetheless. Slam on the outside. Jay Scott just hit his head on those steel steps. One, two. But only a two. Jay Scott, the greatest of all time, showing right now why he has that nickname. And Jay looking to end it all here. A kick to the midsection. The leg is hooked. Adam Smasher. Two. And Jay Scott. Jay Scott is your number one contender. Whoever is the champion here tonight at the end of this night, we only have one more match to go. It's going to be our main event up next, and we will find out who is facing who. What feud is coming up? What fights are coming up? We're all about to find out, but Jay Scott celebrating his victory here. One step closer to being the biggest name in all of the sport. Jay Scott, the greatest of all time. Self-proclaimed, of course. May, in fact, be the greatest of all time in reality in just a few short weeks. But now, the moment that we have been waiting for, Jamie Clark takes on our chairman, Will Sheridan, in a barbed wire death match. Yes, of course, everybody, there is going to be barbed wire surrounding the ring. This is going to finally end the feud. This is going to finally answer who is better. Once I rose above the noise and confusion Just to get a glimpse beyond this illusion I was soaring ever higher then I flew too high Though my eyes could see I still was a blind man Though my mind could think I still was a madman I hear the voices when I'm dreaming I can hear them say They carry on my way Masquerading as a man with a reason My 
Ladies and gentlemen, the following contest is... Ladies and gentlemen, this is the moment that we've all been waiting for. Jamie Clark is finally going to see if he has what it takes to be yet another Clark to be a champion. It's been a long road coming. And I have a feeling with the stakes this high, with the environment this dangerous, this is going to be a matchup like nothing we have ever seen before in CPW. You see the look of intensity in Jamie's eyes. He doesn't even care that he's touching those ropes. It doesn't matter. The only thing that matters is defeating Will Sheridan and attaining the CPW World Heavyweight Championship. And now for his opponent, your CPW World Heavyweight Champion, weighing in at 229 pounds from Fort Lauderdale, Florida. He is the live wire. Win. And ladies and gentlemen, normally I wouldn't do this. Normally I wouldn't talk through our wonderful ring announcer, but here is the deal. This is the most this is the most momentous occasion that we have ever had in CPW. Jane, shut your damn mouth, okay? This man can fuck off. Jamie Clark is going to be our new world champion by the end of the night. Ladies Double and gentlemen. champion Clarks. Jacob Clark is here on commentary. I don't care what Will wants. I don't care what that man says. I'm here. I'm going to be here to support my brother when he wins that world title. Ladies and gentlemen, I may get fired for this. I might get reprimanded. I might lose my paycheck, but fuck it. Let's go. Let's go. Will Sheridan versus Jamie Clark. This is the biggest match we have ever seen. It's going to be the most violent match we've ever seen. And Jacob, as long as you don't burp in my freaking ear like you do every single week, we're good. Let's do this shit. Don't you worry. I haven't eaten since my match. I will not be burping in your ear. This moment, this moment is too massive for me to do silly little burps, okay? Jamie Clark is about to do the one thing he hasn't been able to do, and that is win a world title. All it of the Clarks, every single one of us, has won a world championship apart from Jamie. And, and ladies and gentlemen, I do have to remind you, you know, this isn't a typical matchup. The, the ring is surrounded, of course, by barbed wire, but this is going to be submission only. And the stakes here, the stakes are higher than ever because Will Sheridan has said if he loses this match, he will step down as general manager of Covenant Pro Wrestling. There is no bigger match than this. This moment right here is historic. And you are watching it right now on CovenantProWrestling.com in the audience or sitting at home. This is a moment you will remember for the rest of your life. I'm starting to get nervous, James. I believe in Jamie, but oh my God, my stomach. And Jacob, what possesses your brother to go through a match like this? Barbed wire is no joke. That's not the fake stuff. That's real. Right from the hardware store down the street. What makes somebody do this? Jamie Clark is a tough bastard. Possibly the toughest bastard in the... Look at that! Just swinging himself around on that barbed wire. This is what I mean. Jamie Clark is a crazy man. He is willing to do whatever it takes to get what he wants if he believes it's the right thing to do. And if he believes that's what he needs. And that World Absolutely. Championship is what he needs to solidify his place as the best Clark in the business and two, the best in the business currently. And I hit that on baby Jamie. That's my move. That backdrop suplex dropping Will Sheridan on the head. And we're already starting here to work on the, the lower extremities of Will Sheridan. Of course, we know that he's had knee problems in the past. We know that it's been a very difficult thing for him to overcome. And, and Jamie is very smart in knowing this. 
and lifting him up in a power bomb. Drop him down into a cutter. Some would even call that a knockoff ticket to your clown fall. And ladies and gentlemen, sorry about hit me whispering into your ear during this matchup. I'm trying to make sure Will Sheridan doesn't hear me. I'm trying to keep my job. I'm trying to do whatever, you know, whatever is necessary to get these fans oh. engaged, but it looks like I don't need to because Jamie Clark is showing us an offense unlike we've ever seen from him before. And Will stopping Jamie from get, getting under that ring and getting a weapon. Will just slamming Jamie's knee down on the mat. God we damn. know what this is about. We know that this is about locking in that Will Breaker and proving that he is the de facto best professional wrestler on this planet whoa this is about locking in that twister and proving that jamie clark is the best professional wrestler on this planet as he hits will sheridan with that table right in the noggin Th this match is going to be such an e eclectic mixture of offense because of course you know this is submission only they want to make jamie. each other quit they want to make each other quit right but we also have all these weapons involved and I, I think Will Sheridan just hit that bottom rope. Oh, yeah, that's a that was a barbed wire, whatever they are called, a pin, whatever it is, to the back of the head. But Jamie looking in that figure four, once again, working on the knees of Will Sheridan. Turning over. And Jamie and I, trying to brutalize those, as you mentioned earlier, previously terrible knees. You know, I, I can't help but think forward into the future as I'm watching this because we don't know what's going to happen in two weeks or next week, even on Origins, if Will Sheridan stops being the general manager of Covenant Pro Wrestling. As Will just hits into those that barbed wire rope, I do have to agree, it is a very scary thought to go without any general manager, but it's an even scarier thought to have Will Sheridan as the general manager. The man is an egomaniac. The man Wait. has let the power Wait. go to his head. Just dragging Jamie across those barbed wire ropes. That and now, brutal. table in hand, Will Sheridan has a bad idea in store for, for Jamie Clark. And thankfully, Jamie able to mount some defensive, you know, uh, maneuvers there. Just to get back into this, but and back Jamie, to the future. The back to the future. Onto that piece of shit, no good bitch, Will Sheridan. Come on, Jamie. Let's make it two for two. Two for two. Clark's double champions at the end of Bloody Valentine. It's just a whacking that bat across the head of the piece of shit, Will Sheridan. And just repeatedly and, and going at him. Oh, wait a minute, Will Sheridan now going... He was going for the buffer overflow. But it seems the bitch is buffering and he gets hit with a massive German from Jamie Clark. Jimbo, if you will. Five, five, no! 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 Now you have to give credit where credit is due. I think that was the quickest counter to a 585 five Lariat I have ever seen. I now, think you're fine. I don't have to give Will any form of fucking credit. He's a bitch. The Will Breaker locked in perfectly on Jamie Clark. He's come wrenching on, down. Jamie, come on. Get out, get out, get out. You got this. Come on, man. Flip him, flip him, flip him. Oh, Will let him go. Switching tactics here. A, a single leg clover leap thing. here. But come on, Jimbo. Get out of this. You've got this, man. Come on. Come on, come on, come on. Jamie Clark for world champion. You got this. Wait a minute. Was that, was no, that, that a wasn't tap? A tap? That wasn't a tap. I can, I can guarantee you that that was not a tap. Jamie Clark does not tap to anyone. The only way Will is winning this match is if he makes Jamie pass out. Jamie has more willpower than Will. Well, maybe, maybe that is true. Maybe Jamie Clark will be heading for that table in a minute, but no, actually he's going out to the outside of the ring with Will Sheridan's body. Fuck you, Will. Fuck you, Will. I'm on commentary. Fuck you, Will. Uh, thank you for that. I'm sure our advertisers at a trio is going are going to love that. 
um but now we're you know trying to keep up with the action the day da the daggers in employed there for a moment but blocked by jamie clark Jamie Clark used to be very close with Grateri back in their multiverse days. But he was going. He, he was going for that running lariat. But Will managing to stop it. And, and that just goes to show how well these two know each other. Dropping him on the apron, the hardest part of the ring. Very and, little and, padding on that part of the ring. Insult to injury here, guys, because the submissions do not count on the outside. This is Will Sheridan uh, being, you know, vindictive and being spiteful at this point. This is just Will being a dick. Say it how it is. Well, oh, wait, sorry, yeah. sorry. That's just called being Will. I deeply apologize. I forget. I forget that most people just assume that's what Will is like because he is. But anyway, Jamie up on the shoulders, dropping him onto the apron face first. Making him catch his face on that rope as he falls down. And that's the yeah, brutality yeah. I was on about with Jamie Clark. The man is quite possibly the greatest wrestler to ever live. And it is a shame that he has never won a world championship. But that changes tonight. Jamie sending him up the ramp. Come on, Jamie. You've got this, man. Yes, break his knees. Break them in two. Make it so he can never walk again. That could very well be a possibility here with the level of violence that we're seeing. But now Jamie's stomping away. And both of these men know each other so well. They go for something. And they counter just so often. A big slam there on the outside, and Will Sheridan looking to lock in another submission. These two both seem to be going after the legs, and more specifically, the knees. Both of these men want to stop the other one from walking. They don't want to be. They don't want the other one to walk out of this match. Absolutely, and, and you know what's funny is we we mentioned Grateri just a moment ago. We mentioned that he was close with Jamie in the multiverse days, and most of these submission holds Will Sheridan learned from Grateri. I did not it's know it. I did not know that. Thank you for the information. What? But uh, Will yeah. just constantly punching Jamie in the head. Jamie managing to get up. Come on, Jamie. This is all you. Lariato! A huge lariat there on the outside, seeing the head ricochet, and another there. And Jamie just hitting a boot and a knee at the same time to Will Sheridan. That is the ability, that is the power, that is the knowledge. That is Jamie Clark. And I imagine that it's historical knowledge as well. It's not just knowledge that, you know, Jamie Clark has... I learned himself it's knowledge that's been passed down from the generations of I'm the sorry. Smiths and the Clarks. I'm, I'm sorry. The man is a third generation wrestler. It, it, Would you that's, make the assumption? Would you make the assumption? Of, it is your uh, job to make that assumption. Okay, James? Jamie Clark is the best wrestler to ever come from the Clark family. Possibly even the best wrestler to ever live. He has that history historical knowledge the man has grown up on wrestling and he has always been the most brutal person in and out of that ring jacob you're you're being a little bit more uh violent and aggressive than usual which is you know on par with the matchup but i'm just trying to call a match here dude chill I'm sorry. out i'm getting chill very, out i'm getting very passionate very nervous very stressed holy that crap just causing him to hit his head off that steel chair that man is my brother that is my brother. That is my man. But as I was saying, hit a blade. But as I was saying, that's my brother in there. Do you not expect me to be more aggressive, more scared, more nervous? Yeah, I, I get it. I get it for sure. This is the craziest match we've ever seen in CPW. There's barbed wire ropes. I get it. But I think the villain here, and I'm going to probably lose my job, is Will Sheridan at this point. You're pointing all the aggression at me when I'm trying to call the match, and I don't think it's cool. Will Sheridan has been the villain since the start of this company. He did his job making the company a thing, and it is time for him to let it go.
Time for him to stop. Time for him to just drop the act and stop letting the power get to his head. He's an egomaniac and a dickhead. I think we're getting to be pretty close to the end here with how how Will Sheridan was just out on his feet for so long. But now we're as we're introducing more international objects into the matchup. That's what they used to say in the old WCW days. For any I'm historians there. The big moves, Jamie Gunn for a Larry. 585! It's gotta be over. Lock it in. Lock it in. Break his <laughs> knee. And I believe this is the twister, is it not, Jacob? Jamie Clark! Jamie Clark has fulfilled his destiny to become the CPW World Champion. He has done it. He's completed the legacy. All of the clubs, every single one of us, has been a world champion. And Jamie Clark reached for the sky because this is your moment. I cannot believe what I'm seeing. I don't even know if I have a job tomorrow, but Jamie Clark has just dethroned the king, the king of CPW, Will Sheridan. What does that mean for us? What does that mean for Jamie? <laughs> it means that life is better and it proves that Jamie Clark is the greatest wrestler alive. Jamie, that is my brother. That is my king. Everyone bow down to your new CPW World Champion. I cannot believe it, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for joining us for Covenant Pro Wrestling Bloody Valentine. We'll be back in two weeks.